We're making Salisbury steak, and if you don't know what it is, pay attention because you're going to love it. Oh my god, it's going to be fantastic. I went to a boarding school. That meant you live there. You, you, you did everything there, including eating all your meals there. And when I would walk into the cafeteria at night and found out that it was Salisbury steak, I knew I wasn't eating dinner. At least I wasn't eating that because it was disgusting. They were these little pucks of disgusting hard ground beef. It's not even steak, really. It's ground beef in just a rotten, awful, soupy, shitty gravy. Bruh. But you know what they say. When you find you can't do something, like, you, what's that expression? When you fall off a horse, you got to get back on and ride. We're riding today. We're going to make Salisbury steak. And oh, it's gonna be so damn good with this amazing, rich, incredible gravy. There'll be a little Guinness in it. We're making our own mashed potatoes for all this gravy and Salisbury steak love to sit on top of. Comfort Food 101 starts right now. Just let me show you what's happening with our potatoes first. So in this pot, I have Yukon Gold potatoes that I've peeled cut into even sized chunks and they're boiling away. The Yukon Gold is ideal, absolutely ideal for mashed potatoes. And when you see the other things that we add to them, you will never make mashed potatoes the same way again. And one of those ingredients is, I know it doesn't look like much, but inside this little foil packet, if I can get it open, is an entire head of Roasted garlic. Oh, it's still steaming. So it's simple. You take a head of garlic, you cut the pointy top off to expose all the cloves. You drizzle it with a little olive oil. You wrap it in a little foil packet like this. And you put it in a 400 degree oven for 45 minutes and it comes out like this. And the garlic that you end up getting from this is sweet and a uh, freaking amazing. Now, if it wasn't so hot, you could squeeze it. Watch. And the cloves they start to come up, but it is hot. So let me see if I can just fish them out with my spoon. Like that. So when you get them in your bowl, look how beautiful. Ah, it's hot. Without the paper, it stays behind very nicely. Ow, 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 damn. But you want it all. I'm telling you, if you think garlic is too flavorful for you, this is the version you want. This is the one that will speak to you. This is the one that gives you all the garlic goodness without any of that. I'm just trying to get the extra bits out. Ah, ah, damn it. I can't even deal with this. This is the one you want, roasted garlic. So while it's still warm, this is the time you want to mash it because if you wait for the potatoes to be finished, uh, it's going to be cold and harder to do this. And we want them to blend in beautifully. That's what you want. Roasted garlic paste, which by the way, I think you can buy, but making your own is so simple. Why would you, right? Right. Next up, our meat. And with our new meat grinder in its place, here's what we're using. We're gonna grind some chuck that I've cut into pieces that will slip perfectly into the grinder and some tri-tip. I think this will be an interesting blend. So shall we start? Let's do it. We'll turn our new friend on. Oh my God. Does that surprise anyone? Yeah. The well, this was like a vacuum. Well, it's like a but there's a lot of power here <laughs> compared to our last one. And by the way, this whole housing on the last one was plastic and it broke. I'm just going to tell you. I don't know how this works yet. We're about to find out, but the motor sounds powerful and I, you're not going to break this metal, I don't think. So, here we go. We slowly lower pieces in. And out it comes. Wow, this thing is far superior to what we had. I don't really even need the little plunger stick. So I think what I'll do is I'll alternate. Oh, this is too big. Now I need the plunger stick. Nope, here we go. I'll alternate between the chuck and the tri-tip. The sound is a bit crazy, I got to admit. And the last piece. We're done. Holy snap! That was an impressive display of grinding power.
All right, now we move this guy away. We have the rest of the ingredients to our ground beef. All right, before we continue uh, by adding the other ingredients to go into this good old ground beef nonsense, I should tell you that Salisbury steak is named after James Salisbury. He's an American physician and chemist known for his advocacy of a meat-centered diet to promote health. He lived between 1823 and 1905. We're actually making something healthy today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Dr. Salisbury. Which, by the way, I, I don't know if we're all saying it right. It's not Salisbury, which would be S-A-L-S, -S, like B-U-R-Y. It's S-A-L-I-S, -S, Salisbury. Does it matter? Does anybody yeah, care? You, do you know that the I is not silent? silent? Yeah. I don't know. Why? Why? You're just assuming that it is not I've silent. always said Salisbury. Like this, walking into the cafeteria. Oh, Salisbury steak? F no, I'm leaving. So we all called it Salisbury steak. Sounds like you're saying Salisbury steak. Hold on. Maybe there's a... Okay, check this out. Nobody move. How to pronounce Salisbury. The following pronunciation is brought to you by pronouncenames.com. Oh. Salisbury. 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 Why is there a Brit telling us how to say an American's name? All right, let's continue right here. So into our beautifully ground mixture, we'll begin with, ah, come on now. A couple cloves of garlic. I don't know why they're so difficult. And we continue. We're gonna go with this chili sauce that I like that is ketchup-like, but just has way more flavor. About a quarter cup of this. You know, the funny thing is, is it's kind of like you're making a meatloaf but, but not, right? Uh, one small onion, finely diced. We're gonna use some grainy mustard. Oh, about a tablespoon and a half. Okay, two tablespoons, how's that? Nice, perfect. Use a cup of panko, and I'm using the pork panko that we used the other day for the crispy, scampy shrimp. Got it? You mean the shrimp, shrimp scampy? The crispy shrimp scampy. No, I was trying to say the crispy scamp. I don't know what I'm saying. Is that a burn on your hand, by the way? Yeah, do you have to? Now I got, I'm oh, self, now I'm self conscious. A... Tablespoon of soy that looks like this. Beautiful. And a couple eggs that look like this. I thought you just pulled out of your sweatshirt. I did, out of my pockets. Oh, shit. I got one broken, one didn't. That was a brilliant move. I thought that was going to be so cool. I thought it was going to be outstanding. And it's not. Of course, a big pinch of salt and pepper. And we mix. What are we using, Max? I'm guessing your hands. Why, Max? Because they're right there. Because they're right there and they're the thing to use. And we don't care about how disgusting it looks on camera. Do you want me to put gloves on? Or do you want no. me to use a spoon? No. That'd be ridiculous. I like to start by poking the eggs for you, Max, because I know that really does it for you. I mean, again, is it not unlike a meatloaf in fact you could probably form this into a meatloaf right now bake it and it would be great but it won't be as great as what we're going to do with it so when you've gently mixed everything together and you're comfortable with where you're at it's time to form it into patties so with some uh, wax paper on our plate we're going to try and turn this two pounds of this meat mixture into six patties so here's the way to do it. Well, the real way to do it would be use a scale, but I think I can eyeball this and be comfortable with my work. There's half, that's a third. That's, we basically want these in thirds. And the traditional Salisbury steak shape is kind of an oval. I don't know why. Maybe Dr. Salisbury had a penchant for things that were an oval. When you've got it nice like that, we want these to be thick. Come back over here, we secure our wax paper, we put our friend down, and we continue. That looks like too much. This looks right. So just make six of these. Look, I think a, a third of a pound is nice. It's a good size for these things. Remember, this is a healthy dish, so you can eat a ton of it. Right, Max? Oh, yeah. I mean, the dude did have a, was ahead of the game in terms of, like, emphasis on protein, right? Certainly he was. He believed in it, so. They were probably telling people back then to eat with, eat like, I don't <laughs> even know what the fuck they would have said back then. Well, don't forget, there was a time in our 
nation's history that smoking was encouraged. Exactly. So a cigarette and a cocktail with every meal instead of protein. Right. So I'll just try and squeeze a couple of these guys in sideways. That's what she said. <laughs> yeah, she might have actually. This smells really good. Really good. The chili sauce is a is a wonderful add here. We'll get two more. And we're done. You want to make them the same size, same thickness, so they cook at the same time. Okay, these guys are gorgeous. I'm happy with every one of them. All right, before we get them going any further, let's get back to our mashed potatoes. So the potatoes are ready. Before we get going with them, this is what's going to make them amazing. First is going to be some butter. Oh my God, it's going to be fantastic. We're going to let this do its thing and start to melt. And then we're going to give it, Max, some whipping cream. The butter will melt. The whipping cream will get delicious. Coming back to this. Right now, we check out our potatoes. All right, so our potatoes now look like this. You want to wait until you can take a fork or a knife and go all the way in, right? Like that. Perfect. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, it's perfect. So now let's drain them. So now you've got potatoes that are drained. And now here's how to make them amazing. We're gonna use a potato ricer, which you've seen before, like a giant garlic press. They come with different size, uh, what are these called? Holes. Holes, what are these called? Uh, different size things to push the potato through. I like the smaller one that I've got right here. And it looks like this. We put a few slices in. It can probably fit three or four. And then using this like a giant garlic press, we push down and you'll see why they call it a ricer because the potato comes out like rice. Now we'll go get a couple more. And we'll just continue till this is done. That's great. The system's great. It works beautifully. I'm fishing under already rice potatoes. If I took them all out or did this into a separate pot, that would easily make more sense, but that's not really how my mind works. I didn't want to mess up other stuff, and this is gonna be fine. As long as you get to them all, like you got this. A big piece that's about to fall off. Here? Yeah. That's okay. If some gets riced a second time, no big deal. Just get them all, do them all, and I think we're done. Now we take that delicious little butter nonsense that's looking fantastic and the cream. Oh my God. I saw that coming. What did I do that for? Now we take the butter and the cream and it goes as does a roasted garlic. Fantastic. And we mix. Max and Chance. And this ricer, and this cream, and this butter, and the garlic will give you the most delicious, beautiful, perfect, creamy, soft, incredible mashed potatoes ever. We're missing one thing. Chance, what is it? Max, what is it? I have no idea. Salt and pepper. Thank you, Max. Ha <laughs> ha, Chance. A little pinch of salt and pepper, because you need it. A final mix. Look at that. Oh my. That's what you want to see, right? Do you see that? No chewing. That was just smooth, creamy, in freaking incredible. All right, we'll just put these off to the side. We're gonna bring them back and warm them up when our Salisbury steak is ready, but now we can start getting these guys happening. Look, I'm not afraid to admit that I enjoy a cocktail, but do I need 40% alcohol because I kind of like to drink straight? That's where house comes in. House is one of those things that you can drink with something. You can mix it with soda or juices or whatever you want, 
but by itself on the rocks, my favorite way, it's crazy delicious. This one is ginger yuzu. So we know what ginger is. Yuzu is a, is a citrus. Think a combination of sort of grapefruit and, and lemon and lime. It's refreshing, it's light, it's delicious. Oh, and by the way, 18% alcohol, which means you can sip on this for a long time and you're gonna wake up the next day. Hey, it's a new day and I feel great. Let me show you how I like to drink this. I start with a glass, kind of a nice glass. Make it something decent. I'll put some ice in. Not all the ice in the world. And then it's simple. Ginger yuzu, open up. A Little bit on top. I like to add a little bit more citrus. So I'm gonna take a piece of lemon and a piece of lime, give them a little bend, little juice comes out, drop it in, a quick swirl. And that is something you can be very happy with. And so before a sip, I like the smell. That's really part of the experience for me. You don't get that in a lot of alcohols. You get it in this. Come on, light refreshing. The ginger's just there as a final note in the back. It is so good. This is a thought out spirit. It really, really is. Try house. And by the way, you can order it. It will come straight to your door. Honestly, it's so good. Hit the link below and use my code SDCG to get 15% off your order. 15% off your order. And if you don't like it, send it to me. Because I love it. You're going to like it. Trust me, you're going to like it. Our cast iron pan is going to be our friend today. We'll start with some beef fat. We used it the other day. Do you remember what for, boys? I'm blanking now. Chancy? I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember either. What the hell do you do? <laughs> I was hoping somebody would tell me. Look, it's just rendered beef fat that will make these Salisbury steaks amazing. And we did use it for something. We, we did use remember. it for something. I'm trying to remember what we the did. Philly cheese steaks maybe? With yes, yeah. it was the Philly cheesesteaks. Yeah. Thank you, Chance. Okay, and our friends come in like this. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fit them all because they're so big. Three more. Oh, Jesus. sorry, Max. Two more. One more, and we're in. Okay, don't move them, just leave them. You can give them a little pat, like that. But all we want at this point is color on the outside and a beautiful deep color at that. So let's check one out, shall we? This guy. See, they're still so soft at this point. I'm scared I'm gonna hurt them. Oh. That's what I wanted, but don't break on me, buddy. Okay, you'll be okay. You're okay, you're okay. Come on now, work with me. See, as they firm up, they're gonna be fine, but damn you. Uh... That's it. That's the color that you want. You want a good sear on these. I've made too many, that's the problem. Hey, nobody told you to make six of them. I know, if I could take one out, I'd be so much happier, but I can't. Hey, take that one that broke, put it on the fucking grill, and then we'll eat it right now. Okay, let's finish this guy over here on the flat top. Here, this help him go a little faster. That's crew food right there. This guy. Uh-oh, they're all a little Beautiful. Okay, everybody's good. Okay, these guys are gonna get another couple of minutes to get the same kind of color on the bottom. Ignore the fact that I've made them so damn thick and put so much into them that they're falling apart. They're gonna be incredible when we get to them. Well, we may be making Salisbury soup, but it's gonna be delicious Salisbury soup. So try and get these guys off as carefully as you can without busting them. They end up cooking in the gravy that we're about to make and they'll firm up then. But we're gonna be all right. Perfect, stay right there. And the first thing in, pound of onions. Those are the a mushrooms. First thing in, a pound of mushrooms. I like cremini, which are like baby portobellos, sliced. I don't buy them sliced because 
The ones that come from the store are too thick. I am a bit anal about this, but it's just the way I like to be. We want everybody to get a little bit of the love from the grease that's in the bottom of this thing. And now you know the thing about mushrooms is that they're about 90% water. So we want to let most of that water pee itself out. You'll see. Look, no liquid in the bottom. Give it a second, you're gonna see a lot of liquid. So now, look, if I do this, you see all that liquid? And we don't want that. So you could take it out or leave it on the heat and it will start to evaporate. So with most of the moisture evaporated, we'll make a little spot. We'll add a touch more of the beef tallow. Squeeze in a big clove of garlic. Wait for it to get nice and fragrant. By the way, the boys have now tried their broken Salisbury steak patty, and how was it? So epic. Best shit ever. And when it's there, almost, come on little guy, you're almost there, we mix. Just quickly to incorporate. And because we're not gonna want a runny gravy, but rather a beautiful, rich one, we're gonna add some flour. In fact, uh, three tablespoons over the top. And we mix again. Look, make sure everybody gets coated a little bit. Let it sit for a second, and then we can add our liquids. So here's what we're using. Beef broth and Guinness for big, bold flavors. Little by little, so it doesn't clump. Because if you dump it all in, it'll clump up with the flour. So take your time. Stir, add a little more as you go, until it's all in. And if you're thinking it looks runny, like I said I didn't want, well, you just need to give it a chance to thicken up. And now we can add a couple things. About a half a teaspoon of dry thyme, big pinch of salt and pepper, and we let it simmer until we can add our steaks. So give it a good stir. And if you're outside on a grill like I am, you can shut the lid and come back in five minutes or so. And when your gravy is amazing, in go your steaks. Beautiful. I meant to say, in go your very fragile steaks. Holy smokes, man. Should I put this kid in the middle? And in. So now, ladies and gentlemen, apart from spooning a little of the gravy over the top of these guys, just because they look so bare, and that's what the gardeners that are whirring away next door to us would want us to do, we're just gonna leave them, shut the lid, let them simmer away for the next, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight minutes until they're perfectly tender, cooked where you want them. I'm gonna say somewhere around uh, 135 degrees inside. It's been about 10 minutes. Our friends are gorgeous and ready to be consumed. So here's our guy. Wow. Just look at, look at what's going on there, man. How gorgeous is that? Okay, you ready? We go with mashed potatoes first. These gorgeous, beautiful, oh, a little bit more. Roasted garlic mashed potatoes with the butter and the cream. And now take one of these guys and set him down right there. Oh my gosh. We need a little more gravy right there. A tiny bit of green, a tiny bit of parsley. Oh, come on now. This is some serious comfort food. And here we are. The smell is rising to greet me. The flavors, I know we're gonna be insane. But so now a bite. Still a little bit of, just you can see that it's not dry. Look, the gravy helped, but also not overcooking it helped too. Hold on, I just need a little bit more gravy on this bite. Which I can do like that. Oh shit, son. Look at what we've got going here. Bite time. Mmm. It's, it's, it's melt in your mouth amazing. The combination of the beef broth and the Guinness just made like this perfect foundation for the the mushroom gravy. The, the 
the the Salisbury steak, not steak itself, normally has ketchup in it, but but we switched it for chili sauce. And you you taste it. There was not that much. It was a quarter cup. Oh my god. The birds are singing because they're so happy for me. They're so happy for this. Uh, look, this is, it was a few steps, making my own mashed potatoes, which by the way, the Yukon Golds are the way to go, and the roasted garlic in them is mental. But, but maybe make the mashed potatoes the day before if you don't want to bite off too much, he said. And then, and then make your gravy the day before, and then you're just putting it together. I will say goodbye now. Thanks for hanging out with us. Oh, we put something new up on TikTok that you'll like. Oh, yeah. Go follow us on TikTok. Go follow us on TikTok. Sam the Cooking Guy. Sam the Cooking Guy. I had to remember to say this. I thought you were supposed to remind me. Thank God one of us has a head on his shoulders. Peace. I didn't mean peace. Don't eat shitty food. That's what I meant. And this, far from it. Mmm.